Hello guys and welcome to the channel. This is a peek behind the scenes where I design a book cover for a children's book I've been working on. Most of you might know it, it's the one with a girl called Ellen who has a temper monster called Frank. A book cover is a super important design phase because it's the one that will decide whether people will be curious and lead them to pick up the book and start looking in it. So they need to be hypnotized in a way, I have to hypnotize people to pick up this book. So in this video you'll be seeing me going through this important design phase and I have recorded everything to get a transparent look into how it work. I made the book cover two weeks ago in one evening, actually an evening and a bit of the night. Uh, so it was a late night, um, I hope you'll find it interesting. And in this video I'd also like to talk about the last 10% a thing that I heard from a friend about these last design processes that can be kind of rough and I'll be talking about that later in this video. So I'll be commenting a bit on the video here, on the process. The first sketch here that I am recomposing might seem familiar to some of you because it's the spread that I did using a light box. I think it's a month ago. Uh, the writer saw potential for this drawing to work as the front cover instead of as a spread, which I originally int intended the, um, the drawing for a spread. So we used a different drawing for that spread. I did another, another drawing. However, um, to use this drawing here for the cover, she wanted to hide Frank's face, um, the monster's face, so that we keep him mysterious until being introduced in the book uh, later on. You can tell here how I tried to work with the position of the face. She told me that she wanted kind of maybe just have one eye of Frank looking down to keep him mysterious, but I just couldn't make that happen with this position here of the back turn turning. I even used myself as a reference to to see if I was able to to make that happen, but uh, it just didn't seem right. Um, I was happy with Frank's toes in here and also satisfied with the pose of the girl. And I kind of just, I think we both had fallen in love with the pose of them, like the kind of mirroring each other. It's a sweet gesture, it's it's a strong gesture. However, already at this point, I just felt that something didn't feel right. And I felt that I was lying to myself if this was to be the cover. Um, I kept my spears high though and added color. And as you can tell, I worked on incorporating Frank's tail as a part of the composition, making it work as a framing tool. Here in Photoshop I add a layer of black and white and this is just to see how the contrast works. By looking away from the colors and focusing on just black and white, uh, the shapes of black and white, it's much easier to see if a book cover pops. We want to make pop, uh, make it pop as much as we can to grasp the viewer's attention. Um, and colors, though, they're not the only way to make that happen. It's certainly also about the, the shapes. So I once heard that we perceive shapes before we perceive colors. So a bold pattern and bold shapes are vital to get that um, pop effect. And this is exactly what I go into in the next part here where I do some drastic changes. Also this part leads me to talking about those infamous last 10%. Um, in this design task here, you wanna remember that I've been working for two months on the book 
for the spreads and the thumbnails. You could say I was a bit fed up with the book, no matter how much I love the story and the characters, you will eventually reach a point of feeling a bit fatigued. And this is where I am 90% finished and I need that last 10%. And those 10% can feel like the hardest, but many times, uh, it's my experience, these 10% are also very important to um, to get through. And as we discussed before, the cover is the one that everything's relying on. Um, I could have done the cover in the beginning, of course, before doing the spreads, but that's like writing an essay. It's much easier to write the introduction of an essay once you've finished the essay. So you kind of had this nice, um, concentrated um, dice of all the story in inside of the cover. Okay, so this is where the drastic things happen. In this part here, you see that I changed the composition completely. I'm just wiping the board off. First off, I tried to keep the angry expression of Ellen, which I liked, and I changed this early on because her expression and gesture simply wasn't telling the story of the book uh, when she was smiling. I made her look more mad, which suited everything. Everything, But her still looking at Frank now seemed as if she was mad with Frank, which is not the case. So what I did here was that instead of her looking up at the monster, Frank, she now looks off page. This is the thing that makes the viewer curious to know what she would be mad at. Who is she mad at? Also notice that she's looking in the direction of where we flip a book at least in the western part of the world, which naturally guides us to flip and dive into the story. And now comes the maybe most crucial compositional change. I incorporate the tale of Frank. He is now hidden and he seems far more mysterious. But most importantly, it's a strong diagonal um, that kind of carves into the page, making things much more dynamic and bold. So now I think the cover is on its way to stand out, to have that pop effect. Now this phase I've been in so far might be considered as the last 10% of the whole process of doing the spreads and thumbnails and all that for this book. But seen in the process of the cover phase, uh, however, this evening, I now enter the last 10% of finishing uh, this new composition. And this is where things get rough. But at this point, I was motivated by the bold new composition. And uh, what I do is I usually listen to mu music I really like and drink tea or coffee at this point. Here, I apply a design tool called Rule of Thirds. This is a much used technique in the world of photography, but it can be ap applied to all kind of image making, I think. And what you do is you create equally distant lines, dividing your image into nine squares. And then the theory goes that the compositionally interesting points will be at the places where the lines intersect. So I try to place Ellen's gloves, her one eye at those places. And also you can see that Frank's tail touches an intersecting line. I start to work on the design of Frank's tail, making it very much different than the first take. And in my first take of the cover, I think that Frank's tail seemed oddly flat, like there, was, there wasn't much depth to it. So in this take here, I make some guiding lines, some cross control lines on the tail to be able to place the pointy teeth on the tail um, on the top of these lines here. So this made the teeth kind of more seem natural and kind of being placed on top of the tail, like really physically grounding it. And uh, this makes him more believable and um, yeah, more strong, I think. And now I start working on the hands, the gloves of Ellen. It's important for me to get it, it uh, anatomically correct, uh, correct and get the right angry gesture of the gloves here. And this takes me a while.
here comes a point of a small detour, uh, detour. You could call it procrastination. To show why I suddenly draw a weird shape here, I need to show you something that happened before. I had this scrap from a pastel, which I wanted to use for the design of the teeth on Frank's tail. When cutting it out in Photoshop, I suddenly perceived the shape of a rabbit. So after fixing the gloves on Ellen, I went back and spent about 20 minutes on drawing this rabbit, um, which just appeared to me. This sometimes happens. And this rabbit was just perfect for a little happy Easter card. So um, nice little, little uh, procrastination break there. Before I venture on to start adding colors to my spread, to the cover, sorry. I'm feeling much more confident this time about the cover. So at this point it's late night. I think it's like one or two in the in the night, but I push through. I listen to my favorite songs. I really like John Mouse because he's so intense and the melodies just do it for me. I'm, I'm sure that you guys out there have have some of the other things that work for you, whether it's whether it's uh, Celine Dion or I don't know the score for Tarzan, the animated movie, or it's maybe it's um, Indian synthesizer pop or I don't know. You must have something and uh, this really will help you to to push through those 10 percent the shading was immensely nice to do i love how the shade of frank is so close to ellen's fists making them almost meet and this makes her temper eventually uh, meet the monster which becomes then a visual pun so i'm, I'm very happy about that i'm also happy that there's just a few colors at play in the palette which I think often creates a nice harmony to a picture. So you don't end up with a um, kind of buffet of all kinds of uh, colors clashing. Here I do the final adjustments. I will be making some changes on the glove. I'll be adding some shading, doing this and that. And I just think that you should be allowed to see the rest of the process without me talking. If you're still here, I want to say thank you for watching and listening. I hope you found it enjoyable. Until next time, folks, have fun drawing.